your grandfather left you 436 ounces of gold back then and or your father did you know to your parents and they're saying well should we buy this house uh, uh, with the gold that that dad left us or should we stick it under our mattress and take out a mortgage okay let's take out a mortgage and so those 436 ounces of gold have been sitting under your parents mattress for the last 60 years earning nothing but dust and you know um that the price of the house in the united states right now the average price is probably four hundred thousand. the mean price right in that neighborhood uh and the price of gold right now is 20 about 2400 almost 2400 an ounce 23 and change so those 435 ounces times 2350 well that's a million two that buys you all a million and twenty two thousand that buys you almost three houses mm -hmm. and so not only and it's earned no interest for 60 years so it, it retains its purchasing power, sometimes even accelerates your purchasing power. In this compelling insight from Andy Sheckman, he sheds light on the enduring value of gold amidst economic turmoil. Drawing on historical data, Sheckman illustrates how the purchasing power of one ounce of gold has surged over time, outpacing inflation and real estate. With an ounce of gold priced at $39 in the 1960s and now fetching over $2,400, the metal has proven its resilience as a wealth-preserving asset. Sheckman's analysis underscores the importance of considering gold not merely as an investment, but as a reliable store of wealth. 100%. I mean, you know, the, the best gift I've ever been given in my life was when I was 19, 20 years old, and I started this company with my father, and he told me, there, there'll be one rule or I'll fire you, just one rule. All right, I can deal with that, Dad. What's that one rule? And he says, you'll buy something, gold or silver, every two weeks, period. Love I've that. owned the company outright for two decades. It's not going to fire me anymore, I, but I've honored my promise to him. And I have, because of that, I have looked at, at my metal not as an investment. To me, it's wealth. Wealth that has outlived everything the world has ever thrown at it, from, from wars to, to inflation to depressions to, to uh, pandemics, everything. And... It, it is is a tremendous comfort to me. And there there are very few things that, not to mention, that you can leave for your children or your grandchildren or a charity or whatever that has intrinsic and sentimental value. It has lasted the test of time. And in every single metric I could give you, when you talk about it retaining its purchasing power, sure, in, in back when you mentioned in the 20s, that was a, a $20 gold piece. That was 20 bucks. That's right here, you know, twenty dollars back then, and this twenty dollar certificate, which, by the way, a gold certificate, the difference between it and a twenty dollar bill is that it says payable to the bearer on demand in gold coin. They were excluded that you could interchangeable, but yeah, that ounce of gold right now, twenty bucks doesn't even buy you a tie, but that ounce of gold right now, twenty four hundred buys you a damn nice suit <laughs> and everything else that you need along with it. I mean, you can talk about you can compare the price of a home in 1960 of $17,000, according to the uh, Census Bureau, and an ounce of gold was 39 bucks. And so if you take uh, 17,000 divided by $39, you end up with, uh, and this is to all the people who say it doesn't pay interest, that's 436 ounces, basically. So your grandfather left you 436 ounces of gold back then, and or your father did, you know, to your parents, and they're saying, well, should we buy this house? Uh, uh, with the gold that, that dad left us, or should we stick it under our mattress and take out a mortgage? Okay, let's take out a mortgage. And so those 436 ounces of gold have been sitting under your parents' mattress for the last 60 years, earning nothing but dust. And, you know, um, that the price of the house in the United States right now, the average price is probably 400,000, the mean price right in that neighborhood. Uh, and the price of gold right now is 20, about 2,400, almost 2,400 an ounce, 23 and change. So those 435 ounces times 2350, well, that's a million two. That buys you all a million and 22,000. That buys you almost three houses. Mm -hmm. And so not only, and it's earned no interest for 60 years. So it, it retains its purchasing power, sometimes even accelerates your purchasing power. And it, it doesn't do anything. You're right. Um, but in the world of negative real interest rates, I mean, I don't care that we're being told interest rates are 5%. When you factor in real inflation, which they're lying about because it it is the it's an inflationary system. They have to inflate or they default. So in that environment where they lie about inflation, and we know, look, the US uh, Postal Service just raised the price of a stamp by 10%, but inflation's three, 
I don't think so. Inflation's a whole hell of a lot higher. Go to McDonald's once and tell me inflation's at 3%. Go buy some food. Go buy anything but a TV or a, a electronic and tell me inflation's at 3%. It ain't. So in an environment where inflation is way higher than interest rates and you're getting negative real return on this stuff, an asset that pays no interest but keeps up with the inflation or the debasement of the currency is a whole hell of a lot better than an asset that pays a negative real return in dollars. So look, to me, gold and silver are wealth, period. And it does give me comfort. It is like understanding how to, how to fight if provoked. It gives you calm because you know that, you know, all of the other things that you call investments or that we call stocks or, or mining shares or, 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 or treasuries or real estate, whatever, no matter what happens, that gold will never go to zero, ever. Mm -hmm. And I think you have a better chance of being ripped off by the system than you do someone coming into your home thinking you have gold. Uh, and that's, you know, that that is as clear as I can be on it. To me, it's wealth. It ain't an investment. And it does give me and, and evidently gives you peace of mind as well. In his ongoing discussion, Andy Schechtman underscores the importance of consistency and time in wealth building. Advocating for cost averaging and disciplined saving, he emphasizes the accessibility of silver for all income levels. Schechtman also recommends reputable avenues for investment including Eric Sprott's offerings and undervalued mining shares. Ultimately, he reaffirms the enduring value of physical gold and silver as wealth-preserving assets. It's allowing the laws of compounding, in this case of time, to work on your behalf. And, and cost yes. averaging is the only way to smooth out uncertainty. And silver, yeah. I don't care how up unobtainium gold is, and I don't mean to, be, to, be, to disregard anyone's position in life financially, but... You know, everyone can afford one ounce of silver every time they get paid. And, you know, right. yeah, it takes a lot longer buying one ounce of silver. But so what? You do what you can, the best you can. And there's, it's just like anything. It's like working out or dieting or, or training to, be, to learn how to box. You got to be methodical. You got to be regimented and methodical and, and pay yourself first. You know, as my buddy and your buddy, Richard, I mean, Robert Kiyosaki always says, the only way to get off, it's the only way to get out of the, the, the get off the, Get out of the rat race. Get off the wheel. It is to pay yourself first and be methodical, and and that is the only way to do it. And to me, it, it's amazing because I I still feel like I'm 20 in my head. You know, I showed you my tattoo that I got in Amsterdam. I mean, I don't know any rational 53 year old probably wouldn't be partying in Amsterdam and at 11 o'clock at night go get a tattoo. I did because I still feel that way. You know, in my mind. But you wake up one morning and holy crap, you're 53 years old. And, you know, it's amazing what the compounding of time over 30 years can actually amount to, even in small quantities. So that's what I would suggest to anyone is start somewhere. If you're going to work out and start building your muscles, you got to start somewhere. So yeah. start somewhere, be regimented, be methodical, and always remember to pay yourself first because there's always a reason to not. But you too will wake up one day and say, geez, I've gotten a lot older let the compounding of time work for you instead of against you. And that's how you get out of, out of the way of, um, you know, being not accumulating enough assets as you get older. So just, you know, any major company that has a good reputation, um, you, you, or, or make relation with your local coin dealer, go in and, and, and just, you know, every two weeks, buy a couple of ounces of silver, do the very best you can buy a 10th ounce, uh, a 10th of an ounce of gold, a one 10th ounce, ounce gold eagle or, or gold maple leaf. Um, if you find yourself in a position where, you know, you you only have the ability to, to buy things that are paper for whatever reason, uh, uh, you have a, a brokerage account, and you really can't move it. Well, you know, in your neck of the woods, uh, Eric Sprott is the finest uh, um, and the most well-known and trusted name in, in you know, in precious metals in terms of PHYS and PSLV, the Sprott uh, Trusts. Um, I've worked with uh, Rick Rule and with Eric for a very long time. They are so they're above reproach in terms of trust. That's one way to do it. You know, put, put a small portion of your assets in mining shares, uh, which are massively undervalued right now. Now that's more leveraged and more speculative. And that's more after you have the base of your you know, your physical position, but there are lots of ways to do it. There is no right or wrong way to do it. There is no established protocol or set criteria. It's it's just do it when you can, when you have extra money and look at it not as an investment, at least the mining shares are an investment to me, but the physical, not so much. It's wealth. It's there when you need it. 
And if not, it's the best way to pass money on to your children that carry sentimental value for sure uh, and, and a hell of a lot of intrinsic value that, as we have shown, you go all the way back to, you know, the 1900s, early 1900s, and mm -hmm. it retains its value. And in some cases, even outpaces um, the best of investments. So you go back to 2000, you take Bitcoin out of the equation, and there is not an asset on the planet that has outperformed gold. And so that's an asset paying no interest. It's just, it's the tortoise, not the hare. It just slowly and methodically continues to keep pace with the debasement of the currencies underneath it. And other than the US dollar has done much better in other currencies, it's the inordinate and I would argue unjustified strength of a bankrupt country and its currency that that mutes gold's real value. But um, look, it's been at all time highs against most of the currencies of the world long before it hit all time highs in the dollar doing mm. what it's supposed to do. And that is exactly that, retain its value. So to me, not an investment, just a way to trade paper dollars for, for gold dollars that have been for 5,000 years viewed as wealth. And, and I don't mean to be trite. I don't mean to, you know, I'm, I'm dead serious on that. To me, it's just plain and simple wealth. And everything I've learned in 34 years pays homage to that. Today, we delved into the timeless wisdom of Andy Schechtman, exploring the enduring value of gold and silver as wealth-preserving assets. From historical data to insightful anecdotes, Schechtman eloquently illustrated the importance of diversifying one's portfolio with precious metals. Remember, wealth isn't just about investments, it's about safeguarding your financial future. If you found this discussion enlightening, don't forget to subscribe for more valuable insights, hit the like button to show your support, and share your thoughts in the comments below.